Welcome everybody to Land Back Unity Jams. You know, I can't say enough about all the support that we get to come out and put these events on, all of the volunteers, everybody that comes out with Jerry with the sound equipment, like it is absolutely amazing. And so my brother Logan and Jace and Rob and Phil, like these are some of the best that we got around here and you know what we're gonna try and rock this park until the sun goes down so i hope you're in for a long day of enjoying this uh enjoying this bit of unity and this bit of love today so for everybody that, so our everybody make sure you come on grab a t-shirt grab some food grab some coffee settle in for a nice day because we got some of the best juno award-winning award-winning artists from across all of turtle island so make sure you're putting, giving these guys some good love because you know what, everybody comes out and does this from their heart and their soul and you know what, I love these guys, every one of them. And so these guys that are going to be taking this stage have done some bracelets for supporting Land Back Lane. And so I want to really, you know, my heart goes out to all of the support that they give us and you know what, I wanna, I'm going to ask all of you to support them and bring my brother Logan and of course my good friend Serena Ryder is going to be up on stage and so like, make sure guys and we give these guys as much love as we can. My name's Logan Starts. How you doing, Rob? I wish this song had a happier title, but it doesn't. It's called Dead Man. And it's all about today, and orange shirts, and what everybody's going through. And take up my bones, carry my body whole, and I'll buy back my soul with the gold that I'm owed. Cause I've been a dead man. Put down those pills before she hits for the hills.
Exactly where we want to be And all our bad habits They'll be turning into medicine Disappearing in the sun and wind Oh, everybody. Oh. We want to really make sure we're making a big welcome to everybody for coming out and of course all of our performers and so please Miranda welcome everybody to this space. Yeah welcome everybody. 
Um, I'm so grateful that this has gone as it has. I'm looking for one little special face out there, my daughter Kazaya. Is she here? Can she stand up? Oh no, okay, she's not here yet, but anyway, I wanted to feel like a rock star. <laughs> So yeah, everybody, we got a just absolute star-studded lineup ahead of you. Juno Award winners from Six, from Tyndanaga, from Toronto here, from the, from the neighborhood. And so make sure we're doing everything we can to love these guys because they're going to come out and keep performing for us. And so uh, I know we've got a sacred fire going here. I know we've got food going on. We've got an amazing, amazing pe people doing all this amazing stuff in the back here. The steel workers and OFL. Uh, teachers, we've got everybody and your brother out here to make sure they're supporting this. Because you know what? Somebody asked me at the very beginning of this whether or not the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation should be a somber day. And whether or not it was appropriate to have a, have a party in the park. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm a Haudenosaunee I'm person from Six Nations. You know what? We were born with this trauma and where all of this hurt and all of this sad. You know what? Justin Trudeau has dropped enough tears on enough podiums and around enough teddy bears to be able to have all of that somber day to himself. We're going to have a party in the park if we got a day off. And well, started it off at a really great pace, but I'm going to take it to a little bit of housekeeping. I just really want to thank everyone who's on this land right now. Uh, right now, this area here, this whole Blur and Dufferin is under threat of development. Um, there needs to be no more unaffordable housing in our neighborhood. Instead, we need parks, we need food shopping tree, we need uh, people working together. Uh, you can take a little look at Solidarity Blur Dufferin if you'd like some more information. Um, how to get involved and how to make sure that we have affordable housing here in uh, the Davenport neighborhood. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to Skylar and how amazing this event has gone so far. It's just been an idea and to see like all of you wearing beautiful t-shirts and all of you here to enjoy this music and all of these amazing musicians coming out is just amazing. It's just awesome. Um, also, though, I want to make sure that um, all of our, this whole entire event is funded tonight. We have Pay What You Can at all of the food booths. If you just want to drop a dime there, that's fine. If that's what you can afford, or if you can afford $50 for your meal tonight, it's super. It's going to go to a land defense fund uh, to support folks like Skylar and to support our land defenders across this nation. Uh, oh. So the very next act that we got coming to the stage, and I think she's about ready. And so I want everybody from a neighborhood girl around here, a Métis artist, Miss Leah Bell.
my god, everybody, lay a bell! Like when she came up on stage, I'm like, I was a quiet little voice out of this girl, and then she started to sing, and oh my god, just about knocked my hat off. Like, oh my, could not believe the voice that came out of that woman. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And next on stage, we're going to have Jace Martin. Please, you want to talk? You want to say some stuff? Um, I just wanted to invite a couple people to the stage if there's any survivors who would like to talk yeah. at this time or if anyone would like to share a story. Uh, we've got some folks who are willing to just kind of share and so forth, but the stage is really about like solidarity between two communities. We've got our um, indigenous folks here who are land defenders, who are beautiful humans on this planet and deserve so much respect. And then we also have our neighbors here in this uh, Toronto neighborhood. Um, yeah, would anyone like to come out and share a story? He was like, go back! Not to put you on the spot or anything, but think about it. At any so time, while we're waiting for evening. that. So about, I don't know, three months ago, a friend of mine invited me out to uh, Trinity Bellwoods Park. And there was an eviction happening that day. And they were trying to clear that park. And this guy come up to me. And he said, hey, you're, uh, you're Skylar Williams. You're that guy from Six Nations. I said, yeah, that's me. And he started telling me, he's like, well, my family's from Six Nations. I said, really? He says, well, I live in the park here, but my family, my family's from Six. And I said, well, who's your family? And he started to tell me who his family was. And, He's, and, and the last name sounded so familiar for me because like I went to school with a lot of these people with that name and I said well that that's that's my neighborhood I mean a lot of your family grows lives very close to me on like one road in either direction and so I said like well how long have you lived in this camp and uh, and he said well my mother went to school in residential school in Brantford and after she got out of that school she went to Mississauga and got married to an alcoholic and he ran away from home when he was 15 years old. And had spent the last 30 years of his life on them streets. Come on! And uh, had called this park at Trinity Bellwoods his home for all of that time. Or for this last year, I mean. And so when he came and I, I said, well, what, what does that mean for you? Like, like, do you want, like, what's the plan? Are you wanting to stay here? And he said, well... And the camp over there is where my where my tent was and every bit of belongings that I had in the world were all in that tent. And now the city is now throwing it all in a dumpster, so I don't know where I'm going to go from here. And so you know what? That story for me really touched me in a way that I never thought was even was even possible. Like I didn't understand like what that took and the traumas that our people have been through and like how that all ties in to the residential schools and the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and how how much that meant that like for me at Land Back Lane this was about land for our people to be able to expand our borders but I didn't I didn't quite understand that our people had been stolen from them lands in quite that serious a way you know those our brothers and sisters that were stolen from our communities if we want to be able to invite them home back to our nations back to their communities back to their families we need that land to be able to do that and so when these people that we see in these parks and in these encampments that are are, are from Six, are from Tyendinag, are from Curve Lake, are from wherever, whatever indigenous community, you know, those, those people have gone through things that, you know, nobody should ever have to bear in this world. And so for us to have that opportunity to invite those brothers and sisters home back to their nations, like this is what Land Back has been about since the very first day and you know what? We want to be able to say to those brothers and sisters, we want to invite you home. We want to invite you back to your nation. We want to back you back in our families. And so I'm going to invite this next speaker to come up and share a little bit about what her story is. Everyone put your hands together for Crystal from I Don't Know More Toronto. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who made this day possible. Skylar, you got my heart. Thank you so much, brother. 
and everybody here who came to share in song and story. So many of us carry those stories. I'm a second generation residential school survivor. I went through foster care and then spent a year in a residential school in the 70s. My mother uh, is a residential school survivor. She lives in um, Simcoe next to Six Nations. So today she's at the Mush Hole um, having ceremony with people who attended that school. My grandmother had 13 children, 10 of them were taken away to residential school, my mother being one of them. And it's taken a long journey for her and I to learn to be mother and daughter and reconcile the past. And to me that's a big healing part of my journey to continuously know that my mother and I are growing in that direction because I never had her growing up. And I didn't understand as a youth why I was in the places I was in. But the Creator made me stronger to face those things that I faced and to heal from them and to share that kindness and healing that we need to share with each other today. Even if you never attended a residential school, you still could carry that intergenerational trauma. But know that this wasn't something that was, we, we never chose this. this was pushed on to us as communities and we were displaced and dispossessed and taken from our families and ripped apart and mothers and fathers were looking for children that were taken from them and they they lived with the pain too but you know I have to remember that my grandmother who saved my life was one of those women who was strong and she just pointed me in the direction of healing every time and taught me that I have to love because love is a powerful medicine and for a long time I, I couldn't do that but I learned how to do it and it's a process and a journey every day and for all of you to for us on the survivors that went through so much and the children who are still going through the foster care system you know they need to be reunited with their families and the, the healing journey needs to start but I've learned that as an activist and that's what drives me is that we will take these matters into our own hands we are capable of healing and we are capable of raising our families we need to have these governments stop interfering with this and to honor our treaties and our culture and everything can be reclaimed and things can be reconciled within us within our communities but we will strand, we will continue to stand strong because I'm so encouraged by these musicians and this young girl who's saying you don't know how much medicine that is for us that this is beautiful medicine that you're sharing with us today Skylar and all the people who are participating all our allies continue to stand with us it'll grow and we will continue to move on and press on in the future for our families to come together be united and to have their children dancing and, and reuniting with mummies and daddies so you know that's what I hope and I just want to thank you so much all my relations <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right so let's put your hands together for our next man to take the stage here a good brother of mine everybody chase martin this song uh, is a song that i used to do with my band the wolf pack we toured toronto many many years this song is called what i need uh, we just got to tune up real quick here and we'll get going. I got two more songs, I think. Woo! Give it up for the band. These guys are kicking ass here. Thank you. 
friends of mine and I love them so much. Um, I want to talk about the day that the Eggers and the Ryerson statue came down. I was there during the 215 memorial. In fact, I was guarding that memorial for eight days. I guarded that memorial for eight days, day and night. And I'd like to give a special shout out to ex-university students Brea and um, Sam, she couldn't be here today, I'm guessing, so. But um, if, it were, if I didn't run into them, I wouldn't honestly be who I am today. So thank you to X University students, you guys are amazing. I love you. And um, let's get back to the topic on hand, the statue. So, most of y'all know about the X University statue coming down, right? Yeah! Fuck Edgerton. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, sorry, my language. Anyway, so I wasn't there. Me, Craig, and Danica decided we were going to go over to Queens Park and uh, Snow City Hall. Yeah, Old City Hall. Old City Hall, and then, you know, do a little protest of our own. So when we came back, we saw that the statue was on the ground. I dropped my yeah. e bike, I fell to my knees, and I screamed yeah. in joy and happiness. The tears that came down my face, it could not even like imagine. And then I saw the statue slayer Miguel hit there with Miguel and Barr, both of them, here they are. Give them a round of applause, everybody. Whee! They were both there. Someone grabbed, uh, what was it, a hammer? A hammer? A hammer on a crowbar, and we started beating on him. It's a hammer first, we're like, we're beating on him. We're like, ah! Then someone, then the crowbar. We're trying to take off his head, it didn't work. So we got a saw. Then the chop shot showed up. Then we got the chop shot. Oh my god, that was funny. <laughs> it took us a while to go three, four hours. The sun was going down. The police were there. They knew everything that we were doing. Oh man, the police were there. They knew everything we were doing. As soon as that head came off, you should have heard the crowd uproar in, in, in solidarity, in happiness. My job in, this, in the role for the statue was. I got to carry Egerton Ryerson's head on the back of my e-bike. I got to bring his head down to the waterfront. And Danny, I'm not sure if she's here, I'm pretty sure she should be here. Danny's here somewhere. Danny, me, Craig, and a bunch of other people, including jo Gary was there. Uh, I believe Joey, Miguel, and Barb were there. We asked the water spirit to cleanse his head because it was so evil. That head, when I, was, when I was driving it down to the waterfront, was so heavy, my bike almost toppled. It took five, no, eight marshals to make sure I got there safely. But the day, well that day, when Craig dropped it into the water, I could tell the creator was like, it's gonna be all right. So because of that, because of that day, we were able to bring up to 1942 Land Back Lane, and where we presented it to Skyler. And he has another pipe, guys! So, I also have a little thing. The day of the Trinity Bellwoods encampment um, evictions, a bunch of activists, with Craig, myself, Danica, and a bunch of other people, um, Debbie, Christy, Miguel Barb, um, I created an indigenous activist group called the Sacred Fire Warriors. Sacred Fire Warriors, we were sitting right here after the encampment stuff happened. We looked into the fire and we actually saw the fire, the fire split open like an eagle. And we heard the creator say, become a huge group and name it Sacred Fire Warriors. So we are an indigenous activist group that does harm reduction and we do outreach work for the homeless community. So if you see us around, don't be here to say hi. Hi everybody. 
Thank you, uh, Monica, for introducing me. Um, my government name is Craig Stefan Sandini. My spirit name is Notinikeu Porlizistri. That's Michif for fights for the spirits. I tell you, that day, that day at that Ryerson statue, when I saw it on the ground, it represented to me a fractured, dented, failed institution. We are still here. I look out in this crowd and I'm reminded of Crazy Horse's vision where he saw in seven generations every nation of man come under the great tree of peace. I see black, I see white, I see yellow, red, I see all colors of the, of, of the medicine wheel out in front of me right now. And this is an amazing thing. I'm also going to add, I've been asked several times about my flag. My flag is the flag of the Métis Nation. I'm 36 years old. I grew up with my oral history only. I grew up in Dromore. That's in the Haldeman Tract. Protect the water. Water is life. And when I'm asked about the flag and I tell them that I'm a displaced, dispossessed, suppressed Métis, but I'm proud. Because I come from Louis Riel's government. This is Truth and Reconciliation Day nationally now. I've been using a call to action for the last several weeks. This call to action is number 26. It's in regards to the abuse of power towards indigenous people. The first person I used to call upon was for Skyler. Skyler's a land defender. He's a rights defender. He comes down to Toronto to defend the encampments and they arrest him. Shame. Before I hand the mic off to the amazing groups that are playing today, I'm also going to use this day and call to action number 26. If this nation really wants healing, which I don't think they do, this one thing is going to remain a stain forever. Exonerate Louis Riel. Call to action number 26. Marcy, get you glitch. And so I gotta keep this party rolling here, but I wanna thank these guys for coming out and their great words. Because you know what? These idols that they put up across this country to celebrate the genocide of our people. You know what? These things gotta come down in every way we can. And so the next person taking the stage, my friend Isanabi here, is gonna pre perform some moon. He's gonna entertain with some with some music. So let's put your hands together for Ace and Albie. One second. Uh, before I came to Toronto, man, I used to work up north, up uh, way up north. And uh, one job, I, I was uh, snowshoeing across this frozen river, and I had a broken through. But I managed to stick my axe into the river before I getting pulled under. And so I was crawling across this river and the ice kept breaking underneath me every time. I, I one axe swing at a time, pulling myself to the other side of the shore. And I remember calling out you know, the God or Creator or whatever, whatever you call it, so I was saying. And you know, if I could get one more chance, kind of live my life. You know, I, was, I was young. I, I didn't even live a life at that time. You know, I would walk on a good path and I would, uh, would chase my dreams of being a musician. So I made it across that river and I snowshoed about 15 kilometers back to camp. February night, mind you. And so, 
And I got, I had 13 kilometers to think of what I was going to do. So I uh, got home. Three months later, I had my ticket to Toronto to go play music. So this is a song I wrote about that. It's called uh, Near to Death.
to make sure that I'm able to keep on doing and we are able to keep on doing all of the things that we need to do to keep on bringing our people together and lifting each other up. So I want to say a great big thank you to all of you because then it takes so much to do this work. It takes so much to be able to put yourself in harm's way so that you know that the next generation will have everything that they have coming to them and they deserve so much more than we have today. So I'm really, really grateful to see all these faces out here today to enjoy this good music, to enjoy this good food. And so it, it really warms me up inside to be able to be part of organizing something like this with some of the most amazing people that I've ever met that I'm going to hold near and dear to my heart forever and ever and ever. Thank you guys so much. I just want to welcome to the stage our friends Rosalind and Michelle. Since May, we've been holding a sacred fire here in this park. A lot of survivors, it gives a lot of space for folks to be able to come together in community. Uh, today the sacred fire was lit at uh, noon. And during this whole event, we've been able to share this space, this lovely park that brings so many individuals together on a daily basis. And that sacred fire has been held really wonderfully by the community. There have been a lot of donations to the sacred fire. We just like to welcome in Rosalind. Sagom, Wuju. I'm Rosalind. My my father was adopted. His family is from uh, Deseronto, which is part of the original Tyne to Negaland. I have both Métis and Mohawk blood as well as European. I came here back in the full moon of January with Johnny Moore and my daughter to have ceremony. For the full moon, in that ceremony we prayed for a lot of things, but one of the things we prayed for was the missing and the murdered children. Collectively brought those prayers out. Those fires started happening more and more and the truth started to come to the surface. I believe our fire, as well as other people in the community who started fires at the same time, helped bring this up. Helped create space for community to gather, to grieve, to come together to redefine what truth and reconciliation actually means. True truth and reconciliation. Having this day here, having us all gather is so important. It's important we remember the people who are lost, all those children, all those babies who are lost in residential school, it's also important to recognize the survivors. It's important to stand together in truth and honor one another from every culture. It's important that we, we find a way to come together in all of this. I invite you all to come to the Sacred Fire just over here, and I invite you to offer Sema, we have plenty of medicine over there, and put your prayers in for these children who yet haven't been found. All through Turtle Island, not just in this land some people call Canada, but throughout all of Turtle Island. Connecting with our families on the other side of imposed borders. We need to come together and remember the divide through Catholicism, through Christianity, how people were split and turned against one another. Families through Christianity being imposed on our people. And remember that bringing these fires back is about bringing back our true culture and the culture of my ancestors. Culture that was taken away and by lighting these fires and coming together in a good way and praying for our children, praying for what we need to pray for, can help us all come together in a stronger way, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of our ancestry, whether it be mixed ancestry or non-indigenous. We need to share this truth 
We need to come together in a good way. We need to stop having a community that's divided and coming against one another because that's not helping. And it's actually getting in the way of what we really need to do. So I invite you all at some point to please come over to the Sacred Fire, offer your Sema, offer your prayers, talk to the people there. I mean, there's been people who've been in this park feeding the homeless for a long time. There are Sacred Fires. It's brought people to this park because they feel safer here. So please join the fire at some point and please continue to light your own fires, small fires, big fires, where, wherever you want to and keep praying for these children because there's a lot more children to be brought home to their communities. Thank you for listening and thanks to all the people who are a part of the Sacred Fire in a good way and continue to be. Miigwech. solidarity there is in this crowd today. Um, over the last 48 hours, we've been able to raise enough funds to hold this entire concert. But along with that, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, EFTO for their donations, to OFL, to their unions, to QP, and specifically Fred from QP, and then also Patty from OFL. Just bringing it together all this food, all of this love, and uh, yeah, thank you for feeding our bellies tonight, wherever you are. All right, so let's keep the party rolling here. Next coming to the stage is going to be Tiger Well Mason, everybody. Yeah. I'm to play music in this town, and. I was given uh, an Ojibwe name, Gardawa Wimtiget, an elder up north, give me that name, in this town. It means maker of beautiful music in uh, Nishnabek. And uh, he said to me, okay, so now that you've got this name, it's time to live up to it. At the time, I was learning Neil Young songs, including this one.
gold and the birds to be. Martin Brando, Pocahontas and me. Martin Brando, Pocahontas and me.
TikTok, TikTok people, time's ticking away. Remember that TikTok, TikTok, TikTok people, time's ticking away. Yeah. 
Mr. Andy Mason, all the way from Ottawa. Come and join us. All right. Put them to shake your hips. doing what you do and coming out today and supporting and being here. Bye, little boy. Love you all. All of the stuff that we talked about around the Unity Jam stuff, about pulling people together and working together and making sure that we're loving each other and lifting each other up. And so all of the support that we got at 1492 Land Back Lane, that made that possible for us to have the win that we had there it was only because of all of you guys supporting the way that you guys do. And so some of my family on the West Coast is going through a very similar fight right now. 
And these are this lady that I'm gonna ask to come to the stage right now is Eve Saint, who's a sister of mine and somebody that I hold very near to me. And so I want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're doing whatever we can to stand in solidarity, whether that's in the streets, whether that's on the rails, whether that's in your homes with your pocketbooks, to make sure that we're standing by these indigenous struggles across the country because land back ain't about just one thing here or one thing there, it's about everywhere. From downtown to land back lane in the bush and what's out in territory, we're going to stand beside our brothers and sisters and make sure they get those wins too. Yeah, thank you. Um, wow, what a good turnout. I came a little late, but as soon as I got here, the whole field was full. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, it kind of took me a while to get out here because today is a, is a heavy day. It's a heavy day for indigenous people. A lot of us, we are like reliving our trauma. We are reliving our collective trauma of what our people went through. And now that the government has slapped truth and reconciliation over Orange Shirt Day, over our little ones, right? Because of their quote unquote solution and they want to make it look like they're doing something. I just couldn't bring myself. I was so angry and upset at this truth and reconciliation, especially when my people our, our people are under attack and continue to be under attack by the RCMP, by industry coming in. And actually recently now that we see them acting, these industry workers acting as mercenaries, as RCMP, we see our sisters in the south, out in the west coast, the Quaknik, our tiny house warriors being violently attacked by these pipeline workers. Right? And we see Fairy Creek down on the island protecting our ancestors, the old growth, being violently attacked by the RCMP. And this all going on while it's this federal election. How, how much was it? 600 million or something like that wasted on this early election. And so now they do that to us. They slap us in the face with all this violence, while all this is going on. And now, I tell you again, it's happening again. With Suetin is took over um, a drill site, so they're saving the river, their sacred headwaters, the Wetzinkwa. And so this is kind of like almost, almost not the last dam, but it's pretty, it's pretty important. And so Molly and uh, Slato, AKA Slato, that's her matriarch uh, chief name. Uh, they took over the drill site and they locked themselves down to machines and they stopped further construction. <laughs> and so recently, if you follow uh, the Facebook page, uh, Get Em Done Checkpoint, if you ch um, follow the Twitter, Get Em Done Checkpoint, and the uh, Yinta Access on Instagram, you can uh, follow the updates. They're actually being met with brutalization of the RCMP too as well. So tomorrow, uh, we're organizing a rally in support of Wet'suwet'en. Uh, tomorrow at Young and Dundas. Oh fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I'm Eve Say and I'm actually Wet'suwet'en. <laughs> My father is a hereditary house chief out there, Was. I'm his daughter, and that's the uh, territory that um, Get him done. Checkpoint is on, and that's uh, that's uh, what's under threat at the moment. So sorry about that. A lot on my mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, please come out, show show your support, and it, um, you know we gotta fucking stand up. Excuse my language, but we gotta stand up. We gotta show this government that we're here. We gotta show the RCMP that we're here, and we're not gonna put up with this colonial violence any longer. We had enough of it. Our brother knows we had enough of it. He got attacked, him and his people, on uh, his own territory, his own homelands. They shot at them. We're done. This is it. We're taking it back.
Thank you. So tomorrow at five, uh, Young and Dundas, okay? And plus, um, uh, look out uh, for Porcupine Warriors too, because uh, we do some organizing in support of Wet'suwet'en. Uh, so yeah, thank you, and have a, an amazing, amazing evening. share that this song uh, came to me after Joss Chuko's Tremblay was guiding the students at the Grove Community School where my children go to school and Joss was helping to plant the medicine garden in our community garden and Joss was sharing powerful, beautiful teachings about the sacred medicines and after I left the garden, this song came to me and I just uh, was having a hard time at the moment. I just want to send love to Joss Chukos Tremblay and just uh, thank Joss for the inspiration that birthed this song to share with you tonight. Here it goes. I am here as a guest on this land. As a student of the teachings of the wind, of the waters, of the sand, and the seeds that I sow with the ways that I grow, with my hands and my heart in the earth, with my
with the incredible indigenous performers tonight, the incredible indigenous speakers. Thank you, Chinigoy. We are Treasure Beach and Naomi Chesler. Blessed be tonight. Yeah, so as uh, I finished on school going for a night, uh, inspired by the last show I went to before the pandemic, and uh, yeah, just the season, the day, the moment, and uh, yeah, I think someone else was up here and saying we've all had to, a lot of time to be alone with ourselves and befriend ourselves, and I really felt that, and uh, yeah, the song just kind of came out of that too, still on for a night.
when this gentleman started to sing and I had to stop. I'm like, shit, I gotta go. Because that was absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much. I also just wanted to give a shout out to all of our OG land defenders here who's, who are completely freezing probably at this point, continuing to listen to music, continuing to be in, in the space. And I just want to say, like, you guys are amazing. So. And I know I've had an opportunity to speak with quite a few of those OG land defenders. And they, you know, if it wasn't, and everybody talks about these wins that we've been having, you know, like they just had a big win out in Prairie Creek out on the, on the West Coast. You know, we stand with our brothers and sisters on the East Coast at the Mi'kmaq Fisheries, you know, the Kittiga and ZB Moose Moratorium. You know, all of those things, all of those spaces where we've had wins are because of those OG land defenders, rights holders, that did all of that work to make sure that we had an argument in our generation. So please, yes, absolutely. And you know, so we need to take our hats off to those people that, you know, laid it all on the line for them at Oka, at Wounded Knee, like these are the people that, that that laid the groundwork for us to be able to do the work that we're doing today. And you know, at Ipperwash, when I was just a boy getting taken there, like these are the things that you know set the bar for what is expected of us as land defenders to be able to hold that bit of peace and love and that connection to these lands. And so, like again, like I just can't say enough about how grateful I am for all of those OGs that, that, that held it down in the ways that they did over the last 500 years since Land Back started. We just wanted to uh, welcome one of those OGs to the stage. We have Pox out there somewhere. And uh, this is going to be our last act for the night. I just thank you all for being so absolutely supportive of this event, for coming out, bringing your children, bringing your children's friends, and allowing like your children's friends to see what it means to gather in a space like this. I just so love it. And I mean that we had Eve Saint come up and from Wet'suwet'en territory come and talk about what that means for her family to put their asses on the line. And you know what, like all of that, this unity that we talk about, you know what, to just be able to love the fuck out of each other for just that minute, to be able to lift each other up is what is needed. And so you know what guys, to invite somebody from tying the egg up here to the stage. I, I don't see them up here just yet. But <laughs> There he is! And so yeah, I'm really, really grateful for the work that they've done because you know what? In January and February of last year, for these guys to hold down the train tracks out in their territory the way that they did. And you know what? And just like when the OPP raided them, we shut shit down around here because this is what it takes to make sure that our voices are heard. To make sure that we're lifting each other up and doing exactly that and loving the fuck out of each other for these brothers and sisters who are holding the line across the country. It takes all of us to be able to amplify and lift each other up. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. And Pots, please, I'm really, really, really grateful to be able to welcome you to the stage following all of these great acts that have come to close out the show tonight. Thank you. 
Thanks, everybody. Thank you to everybody that has come out and made this event possible. And of course, my co-host tonight, Miranda Black. I mean, I can't say enough about how much love I have for you and how much work you put into this. And all of the volunteers. Man, I'm like, amazing, amazing, amazing to everybody that put the food on. Like, please, let's put our hands together and a big thank you. Now I'm And you know, of course, none of this would be possible without Jerry, our sound tech, like he is just next level. So everybody, for all of these fights that are going on across the country, whether that's Ferry Creek, whether that's Wet'suwet'en, the Mi'kmaq Fisheries, the Kittigan ZB Moose Moratorium, the Inuit fighting up north, like, these are all things that we need to get involved with, all things that we need to do to stand together and make sure that our voices are heard. Because that's one thing that these schools that we're talking about, everybody's talking about the, the residential school survivors and those babies that were stolen from our communities and were lost and never returned. You know, but with that, all of those schools were meant to dispossess us. All of those schools were meant to do was to tear us away and break that connection to family and break that connection to who we are as Ongo people. 
And so I really need to, to ask you, I need to beg of you to look into your hearts to see what that reconciliation that people keep talking about, about what this fucking Justin Trudeau has dropped so many goddamn tears about, about what that really means to reconcile with the fact that you were, that lots of my people had to die, lots of our children had to be stolen from those families in order for you to be here. And so for you to reconcile with what that means, it means standing beside our brothers and sisters on those front lines across this country. It means standing, it means, doesn't matter whether that's with your pocketbook, with your body, with your life, to make sure that you're standing with them. Because we need to stand each other and we need to lift each other up at every opportunity. And so I'm going to ask Phil to come out here and finish this night off with this same honor song to send us on our way to tuck us in the bed tonight. Now everybody. Anybody want to come up here and help us sing? We're going to sing the aim song. Come on,
thank you all for coming out tonight. I couldn't think of a better way to end the night. So please, everybody, drive safe. And again, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for a beautiful night.